Zoax.net. History 2. Euclid. Euclid was born in ancient Greece thousands of years ago. Greek culture was flourishing at the time, and knowledge and learning had become the central focus of Greek life. The greatest thinker and philosopher of all time, Plato, had founded a school called the Academy in Athens, Greece some years earlier. Eventually, Euclid came there to study geometry under the direction of Plato's pupils. Although Plato is best known for his philosophy, his academy taught geometry as an essential area of study. Plato's philosophical dialogues frequently mention geometry, and it is said that the door of his academy was engraved with the message, Let no one ignorant of geometry enter. Euclid took what he learned at the academy, and went on to found a school of his own at Alexandria around 300 BC. It was during his time in Alexandria that Euclid collected the known geometric facts of his time and produced his famous 13 volume work called The Elements. In The Elements, Euclid compiled results, expanded upon them, and fashioned them into a logical system using what has come to be known as the axiomatic method. In the axiomatic method, we take a small set of simple and obvious assumptions or axioms and use them to logically deduce complex results. Through his work in the elements, Euclid has come to be known as the father of the axiomatic method. Euclid's axiomatic method has been passed on for thousands of years now and has become the very definition of how mathematics is done today. The axiomatic method has also become the basis for the more rigorous sciences. It is impossible to overstate the importance of the elements in the development of science. Euclid's timeless work has inspired the greatest minds of science and laid the foundation for all scientific progress. It stands in the history of civilization as the beginning of all genuine science. Euclid's influence, however, was not confined to the sciences. His work inspired great thinkers in numerous other fields. Philosophers like Thomas Hobbes, statesmen like Abraham Lincoln, religious leaders like Father Matteo Ritti, and poets like Edna St. Vincent Millay. From scientists like Galileo to artists like da Vinci, Euclid's geometry drove the rebirth and expansion of learning in the Italian Renaissance. Since the first published edition in Venice in 1486 AD, Euclid's elements have had over a thousand editions printed and it is considered second only to the Bible in that regard. The elements and the axiomatic method have long been recognized as an important part of every learned person's education, and today geometry is a requirement for every high school student in the United States of America. There are ten assumptions that make up the axioms used in the elements. Five are general statements called common notions, and five are geometry-specific statements called postulates. For example, one of the common notions is, things which coincide with one another are equal to one another. And one of the postulates states that you can draw a straight line between any two points. From these simple axioms, Euclid begins his elements with the construction of an equilateral triangle. From there, he goes on to derive many well-known results like the Pythagorean theorem for right triangles. Although the elements is primarily a geometric text, it derives sophisticated results in other areas like number theory, algebra, and solid geometry. Some of Euclid's work was so far ahead of its time, like the method of exhaustion and polyhedral approximations, that it anticipated the developments of integral calculus and approximation theory over 2,000 years later.